Hey y'all. How is everybody this evening? So I can get it pulled up on my tablet here. So that I can see comments. Always good. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Alrighty. Oh gosh. What is going on with my camera? Let's straighten that out just a little bit. Or at least try. We can at least try. Okay. That didn't help. <laughs> oh, what has happened to my camera? It's gone a bit astray today. I'm not sure what's going on. Sorry for all the noise. If you hear any motorcycles in the background, apparently uh, a group of motorcyclists have decided to run rampant through my neighborhood for no apparent reason. Uh, <laughs> not real clear on why that's happening, but we're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna ignore them. So I think I've called, heard Adele call them hooms or something along that line, which I find hilarious. So the hooms are certainly being quite loud tonight. Not sure why. Fourth of July is tomorrow. So you would think they wouldn't be celebrating just yet, but I am sure we will hear fireworks tonight. A hundred percent sure we will hear fireworks tonight. It's gonna happen. One hundred percent. It always makes for a rough night for us. We don't really celebrate the 4th of July for that reason. My girls don't like fireworks. And the older kids, I nah, don't really get that excited about it anymore. So we just don't really do anything for 4th of July. I know some people do though. Some people have a, a big get together and things. I would hope they're not doing it this year, but <laughs> far be it for me to tell others what to do. I'll have to wait for folks to jump in. It looks like everybody's busy tonight quite possibly out and I don't have a problem just chatting to myself. If y'all have missed it, I did post all of the videos from the mini class that I created uh, for beginners. And initially I had them as private because it was a class on my blog and it wasn't paid for, it was all free. It was just, I had associated it with the blog posts. And after watching it again, I realized well, you don't really need the blog post to get through the class. I could probably release this to YouTube and let anybody find it and it'd be fine. Because I didn't feel like very many people, again, sorry for the very loud motorcycles that have apparently decided to run through our neighborhood. I don't know why that's just now a thing that has not been happening all night. I don't know where that's coming from, but uh, hopefully it'll stop. One can always hope. So, working in the mini album today, and uh, this is a little album that I created for photos of people in my family and my husband's family that have passed away. And we do have kind of a little tradition in our household. I have uh, people we're really close to, like my grandparents and my dad, uh, and my husband's grandparents are in photo frames on the mantle over the fireplace we never use. And because I live in the south and it doesn't get cold. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Remind me of that in the winter. I'm sure I'll be singing a different tune. And uh, I thought, you know, it would be nice to be able to share stories of some of the other people that have passed away. Uh, so that is what we're doing here with this album is we're sharing stories of people in my family and my husband's family who have passed away and that way my kids can look through this really nice little mini album. Now we do have a tutorial for how to make this with the Coptic binding. I have that on my channel as well. I will link it before you uh, in the description of this video as I do always when I post these. 
Uh, we just occasionally, about once a month, flip this open, add a few more photos, and I don't mind doing doubles. I have several pages about my dad, several pages about uh, my grandma, and uh, I just enjoy printing out some photos and putting them in the book and, uh, and, and remembering, kind of reminiscing about these people. Okay, let's see. Let's start with the ones of dad, I think. Is he toward the back? Yeah, here he is. Okay, so got this one. Could do this plain page and add a little bit extra to it. That way I can use these two photo larger photos here. I also have a smaller photo of him. These ones I, I printed four to a four by six using uh, the Canon selfie photo app. Uh, because they're really poor quality photos. They're like pictures of pictures, I believe. And so in order to get decent quality so you can actually see them, I had to print them small, which isn't ideal, but it's fine. <laughs> it's a mini album, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Let me check and see if make sure this is updating. There we go. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I've got, uh, this one here is of my dad with all of his grandbabies. And this one is of my dad with his dogs. He was a huge, avid dog lover. And dogs were, have always been a big, big, big part of his life. So I thought it would be neat to go ahead and make that a big part of this page. Add that to his story, if you will. Let's see what I've got. Goodbyes are not the end, they simply mean, oh, that got cut off. Hmm, interesting. What else have we got? Lots of paper in here that hasn't been used yet. I think I like the idea of going kind of dark on this page, and it's already cut almost exactly to the right size. So, yeah, let's go for that. Let's get started with that. All right, here we go. One of the things in my new craft room that I've kind of had to get used to is that uh, my kids' rooms are right above me. So if you ever hear any loud, like, clunk, <laughs> like that, uh, it's because my children are right directly above me and uh, quite often don't remember that I'm needing them to be quiet. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Hey, Melissa. I was pretty sure that was right, but I didn't want to say the wrong name. So I double checked my list. Welcome, welcome to the stream. We're just uh, working in the mini album again. Working on a couple of pages about my dad. He'll probably have the biggest section in this book because I have so many photos of him and I have so many stories about him. Whereas some of my other relatives, I don't really have that many stories. I just have a couple here and there but uh, not a lot of major ones that I want to tell. I am doing well, thank you. Yes, 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 we have stayed home. We really don't go anywhere. All of our plans have been canceled at the moment for the summer, which is a little bit frustrating, but you know what? We're all at a place right now where we gotta make sacrifices, don't we? We just do. For the health and well-being of the country. And you know what? I'm more than willing to do that. This might be kind of cool little piece to add there. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I know what you mean. My kids are always making tons of noise and I'm like, alright guys. <laughs> I have to go live. Can we try to keep it to a dull roar, please? <laughs> uh, it depends on the day. Some days they do better than others. Oh, this little cutter sometimes makes me crazy. You know, I know some people swear by these little guillotine cutters and I do like mine, but every once in a while it kind of gets on my nerves. <laughs> just because you have to hold it a certain way for it to work properly. 
So yeah, we're working in the mini album today. I have uh, six pictures to put in today. Three of my dad and a couple of extras here. I had to print them really small because they're really poor quality. But I have two of my grandma. This one I love and wish I could get a bigger, uh, more clear original to copy, but I can't. So I had to print them small because they're pictures of pictures. And so I thought, well, better to have small pictures than no pictures at all. Gosh, I hope you can't hear that thumping. That is uh, somebody upstairs just absolutely dropping everything, apparently. If it continues, I may have to pause momentarily and address that. Because I don't really want anything coming through my, you know, we keep dropping things and I'm always concerned. Please don't come through the ceiling. <laughs> it's never happened, but you know, it's always that fear could happen. <laughs> you just never know. All right, we need a little sentiment for this side. I really like this paper. It's sad that the really nice black floral is on the back of it, because man, I like both of those. Uh, let's see. We could do just thinking of you and kind of tuck that under. That sounds good. Hey, Renee, welcome, welcome. Glad you could join us. Just working in the uh, mini album today. Just doing a little bit of uh, memorial photos. Because I don't want this to be one of those albums that you cry as you look through it. Like that's not the point. The point is to show my kiddos family members that they uh, may have not met, may have passed before they were born, or and or <laughs> to share stories with them about family members that they did know, but didn't, didn't know the story. Thinking something like that could be quite nice. I'm gonna cut it off right at that G. I think it'll fit. I think I can make it fit. We'll find out. <laughs> How has everybody's week been? Ours has been pretty, pretty normal, pretty quiet, which is always good. That's <laughs> not complaining, mind you. <laughs> That's always a good thing when we have a quiet week. Not too much craziness. No one's sick, thank the good Lord. No one is sick. Because, oh, scary. Hey, Crystal. Yes, the Gilly Team Tremor. You know, I know that the great big, I think it's Tim Holtz has one that's a great big one that uh, everybody swears is just the best thing since sliced bread, but I don't like the little one. I mean, it does the job, but I always have a hard time getting it to cut exactly where I want it to cut. And <laughs> sometimes it just seems like it doesn't cut straight. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Come on, come on, don't do this to me. Oh man. Hey Jennifer, welcome, welcome from Louisiana. I'm not too far from you in Mississippi. Not too far away at all. Louisiana is one of those states I really like to visit. I haven't been to a lot of states, but I have been to several. I would say I've spent time, I mean, you drive through lots of states, but I have spent time in about a dozen. Kind of mostly the ones between Mississippi and Michigan. <laughs> where I live now and where I grew up. But those are the ones I've spent the most time visiting. Because we always end up back in Michigan to visit because that's where a lot of family is. Oh my goodness. How has everybody's week been? You've been printing pictures and organizing them. Oof, oof, Renee, that is my least favorite part of scrapbooking. <laughs> I really don't enjoy that part, I gotta tell ya. Not a fan. <laughs> oh, I really don't like it. It's, I'm not a big fan of organizing anyway. I think that's part of it. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a clean scrapper. I'm not a, an organized person in general. My husband is more type A than I am. I'm more 
type B, I think. I'm disorganized and messy and, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I know you know the type. That's me. I fully, fully admit that is me. I am that messy, messy person. That's one of the reasons we, he uh, finally agreed to move me in my own craft room because uh, all of my stuff was driving him crazy. Now this is a combination of ephemera, stickers, and uh, chipboard that I've ripped the back off of so it's super thin because I don't want to add a lot of bulk to this particular album. Otherwise it wouldn't be very mini, would it? It'd become a regular album? <laughs> a not so mini mini album? <laughs> huh. That's cute, but I think we need a different, like a proper word probably. What does this say? Here? That's a weird word. Oh, heart. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Maybe we'll use that there. Uh, do we have the word love to go with this you or have we already used oh miss you okay it was miss you not love you though I do love him for those that are just joining this is my dad who passed away in 2015 thankfully he got to spend some time with all of my kids before he uh, ended up getting cancer but he was a wonderful wonderful grandpa absolutely wonderful grandpa and uh, I'm very thankful my kids got to spend some time with him because let me tell you my grandpa passed away when I was six I believe and I didn't really get to know him very well and I don't really remember him very much he was a wonderful man from the people I've talked to and family members who got to know him obviously much better than I did but he, uh, yeah, he passed away from a, a stroke, I believe. And I have his photo in here somewhere too. Do I? No. No, not today. I have it in here already though. All right, I'm gonna start gluing this down while I like it. <laughs> Before I change my mind. You've been scrappy for 20 years. Yeah, so have I. I have as well. Oh, thank you, Crystal. Yes, I did not want someone to feel like they had to go buy, you know, if you do a, even a mini class, okay, and you use a lot of different collections, some people will take it very literally and think, oh, well, I need to go buy all the exact collections she used and all the bits and pieces and, oh, she used 15 different collections and her five layouts. And I thought, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me try to simplify this as much as possible. You don't need 100 million tools. You don't need, you know, 15 different collections. I purposely chose a kit from Felicity Jane because Felicity Jane kits are all pretty varied in their embellishment. You get a lot to choose from in every kit. And I'm not even subscribed to them right now. I just have some kits in my stash that <laughs> I was subscribed and couldn't keep up because I buy all the things, let's be real. <laughs> I was trying to keep people from following the path that I'm on. Of, ooh, that's pretty. Let's buy the whole thing. You know? <laughs> but I was just trying to show them, you know, you just use the supplies you have access to. Uh, and with a kit like that, it's pretty similar to something you could walk into Hobby Lobby and get one of those uh, kits that they have that are pre-made and like 10 bucks or something like that. And doesn't cost you an arm and a leg to start. You don't need a bunch of fancy tools. And you can still create some really cool, neat little pages without having spent all of your money. Especially for a beginner, that's, I think that's important. I think that's important to know. This hobby isn't gonna break you. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa, I appreciate that. I, I've had a, a, some great feedback on it. I actually released it as a class uh, about, I thought it was the last year, but I have a feeling it was in 2018 on my blog and it didn't get much attention because of course my blog is pretty small, but I was watching the videos back to see if I could release it on YouTube just as a YouTube class so that you, if you didn't read the blog post, you didn't have to. And sure enough, it worked just fine. <laughs> I was like, well, 
<laughs> Let's go ahead and do that and maybe more people will benefit from it. I have a personal mission, I should tell you. I have a personal mission that I am trying to coerce more millennials into scrapbooking. I want to bring in also Gen Z if I can. Now I may not appeal much to Gen Z. <laughs> I'm raising Gen Z. I know how they go. <laughs> but I'm not quite that entertaining I think to them. But if I can put the information out there, make it free, make it easy to access, go in a, in a pace that you can actually work with me and not fly past you then I think for beginners, that's really helpful. That's, you know, useful. And I'm all about let's keep our craft alive. Every time I hear someone say, hey, I was thinking about joining YouTube. It's like, hey, please do. Please join YouTube. I, I think it'd be great to have more inspiration out there than we currently have. That's a great idea, please. <laughs> The more people we have talking about scrapbooking, the more people we have looking into scrapbooking, I think the better. You know, I, I know there's some out there who are like, oh, I don't want any more uh, competition. And I'm like, hmm, not worried about competition. <laughs> this isn't a job for me. I know it is for some people. I respect that. I just, for me, it's not. It's not a job. It's just for fun. It's my hobby. If, uh, if I get to a point where I can't make videos anymore, well, at least I've put over 500 of them on the internet. <laughs> I've done my part to try to keep our hobby alive. What am I looking for? I'm not sure, but I'll know when I find it. Isn't that how it always goes? Oh, I think I like that. I think it was the color. I think it was the color I was looking for. You've been printing pictures and scrapbooking the past two days. Oh, no plans for five days. That's awesome. That's awesome. My husband is going on vacation with my older three kids. They're going camping out in the wilderness where hopefully there's very few people and uh, they need to get out of the house. They, <laughs> for their sanity and mine, they badly need to get out of the house. So he's taking them out to a, a, a campsite where there shouldn't be too many people and they're going to avoid people like the plague uh, and just camp for a few days. Just get out hike you know just the safest way to take a vacation right now is to go camping and be outside so no no plane travel nothing like that they'll drive but i think they need to i think a lot of people are there you've been wanting to try a junk journal oh that's a good idea yes yes do that jennifer it's oh there's so much fun they're so much fun. Yeah, scrapping is my therapy too. It's the only thing that keeps me sane right now. Let's be real. <laughs> Let's be real. It is the only thing keeping me sane because I have seven people in my house, including myself. And that's a lot of people 24 seven <laughs> for months and months on end. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just, just saying, I love them. They're wonderful. I'm glad they're here. <laughs> but it's a lot of people to have in your house for a long period of time. And most of them are kids. So there, there's a lot of nervous energy that has been just kind of filling the house for quite a while. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm on the fence, though, because I say that and the local school board sent out an online survey to all of the teachers and students and asked them, okay, coming school year, do you want your students and or teachers to be in school, in person, back to normal, or do you want to do online or some sort of in between? Now, my husband and I, uh, are very nervous about sending the kids back to school. Obviously, most people are, I think. Uh, and really on the fence as to whether or not it's a good idea. So we had said, no, let's just do online schooling, make it easy for parents, you know, find a system that makes it easy for parents and uh, the kids and uh, just, just function that way. Well, <laughs> needless to say, we got outvoted heavily 
most people and teachers would prefer to go back to in school schooling. Now, I should give you a little bit of background here. I have homeschooled all of my children before, and it would not be a huge hardship to do it again, but we would have to give up certain things, like my daughter is in band, and my oldest son was supposed to be, uh, what is it called? He can go to, he goes to, he's supposed to be going to a career tech center uh, and getting college credit for it as part of his schooling. So now we're on this fence of, do we send them back to school because they have these programs we can't offer at home? Or do we just go ahead and do what we think is probably best and keep them home? We're really on the fence. It's been a hard decision trying to talk to the kids about it and they don't know. They don't know either. So it's it's been tricky. So I understand people who are really questioning that. <laughs> no, me and nature, we are not friends. <laughs> You'll notice I said they are going camping. <laughs> Mom is not going camping. No, no, I, I am not a fan of camping uh, at all. Uh, <laughs> me and the outdoors are just, we're just not friends. We don't get along. I, I am a miserable, miserable camper. And it's really, truly to the benefit of everyone else that I don't go. <laughs> I am open and honest about my uh, shortcomings and that's one of them. <laughs> I don't camp well. I am a creature of comfort. <laughs> oh goodness. I'm not an outdoorsy person, that's for sure. I am much happier to sit indoors, write, read, and scrapbook. Occasionally paint. But I haven't painted in quite a while. I haven't had a lot of time to paint. See, when I want to paint, yeah. <laughs> when I want to paint, I have to make sure all of my kids are out of the room because they inevitably get into it. One, I mean, just watching, they manage to get into it. <laughs> and then I just, no, no, no. <laughs> I have carpeting in here, it's, it's not a good idea. So with everybody home, it's just not been something I could do and that's fine, it's okay. We all make adjustments. I imagine the hardest adjustments have been for people who are used to being outdoors used to being out doing things all the time and they can't you know i imagine that's really been tough really been tough for folks and i don't discount that at all i mean that's hard if you're an outdoorsy person and that's what gives you that stress relief that you need but you can't <laughs> you cannot go outside i mean that's that's got to be really frustrating Hey, Sylvia. Yes, oh, that's a good idea, Renee. That's a good idea. Yeah, no, see, probably the only way they could get me to join them camping is if we rented an RV of some sort. Because <laughs> I, I don't do tent camping. I don't do outdoorsing stuff. It's just not my, not my jam, you know? Not my cup of tea. I don't like bugs. I don't like the heat. And in Mississippi, that's kind of everything we have outside. <laughs> sort of comes with the territory, if you will. Oh, imagine that. You've never been camping? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's... I used to camp as a kid, but we'd stay at a cabin. And... That was, of course, back when I was uh, better able to like run around and I guess didn't notice the bugs as much. <laughs> that was also in Michigan, which is much different <laughs> than camping in Mississippi, let me tell you. Because I went camping, where did we go? Georgia, I think. We drove out to Georgia for a scout camp for my daughter and I was miserable. But I had to go because it was women's only. Women only camp. Female only camp, maybe I should say. And if she was gonna get to go, I had to go. 
and I felt really, really bad about not her not being able to attend just because I'm a big giant sissy. <laughs> I own that. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> uh, I own that I am a big giant sissy. There's no, no shame in my game. <laughs> uh, I just really don't like being outside. And it was hot. It was 100 degrees every day. And they were, they were doing like, um, what is it called? High adventure stuff, like ropes courses up in the trees and uh, some crazy swing and uh, zip line. And I mean, she had a blast and I got bazillion great photos of her having a blast. So in that respect, it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, especially the indoor plumbing, I agree. Yeah, I think that's one of my biggest phobias is the uh, communal bathrooms because they're always, they always have bugs in them. Let's be real. They're indoor outdoor bathrooms. They always have spiders. They always, <laughs> they're always kind of dirty and I can't, I just can't function. Can't deal. The entire week that we were at camp, was it, was it a week? Not quite a week. It was about four days that we were at camp in Georgia. And it was a beautiful camp, don't get me wrong. It was an absolutely gorgeous camp. But <laughs> uh, it was very, very outdoorsy. And I am not an outdoorsy person. Thankfully, our cabin had air conditioning, which was the only saving grace and probably the main reason I agreed to go, uh, other than her getting to enjoy it, of course. But the main reason I could deal is because I was able to go hide in the cabin when I just had enough and uh, recover a little bit. You know, sometimes you gotta do that. But yeah, I didn't take a shower the entire four days. <laughs> we just went swimming. They had a pool, which was nice. And then we went swimming and uh, I would just did like dry shampoo and stuff just so that I wasn't really gross. But when I got home, man, I had to jump in the shower and it felt so good <laughs> to be home in my own bed. My own bed. Take a nice hot shower. Oh my goodness. That is so, so underrated. <laughs> Especially down here in Mississippi, there seems to be a lot of outdoorsy people. Uh, they like to go hunting, they like to go fishing and hiking and all that stuff. Scouts is really popular. My kids are all in scouts, except for the twins. Uh, mostly just because they, they're not really interested. Uh, they like being outside but I don't think they would do well sleeping outside. Like they're, they, <laughs> they like their creature comforts as well. So while I do know they would love the outdoor activities, I think they would struggle with tent camping. We have talked about like renting an RV and uh, not now, obviously, but <laughs> maybe in the future, oops, maybe in the future doing that. And then the girls and I could sleep in the RV and then the rest of the kiddos and my husband could tent camp because they love tent camping. They enjoy it. My husband has a blow up mattress that he uses and uh, the kids have a great time. I'm glad they like being outdoors. That's good for kids, I think. <laughs> How do I decide what photo to do? Oh, yes. Uh, so I don't mind double scrapping them so i'll put that out there but i have a system with my what the what the album is for so i have a set of family albums there's usually two to three per year that cover anything that has to do with the whole family or as with multiple people in the family and then if uh if the photos are or the story is about just one kid then they each have individual albums for their personal photos that they will get to take and keep once they move out. That is their photos. They, if they decide to throw them away, that's okay. I'm not going to cry about it. It's totally fine. It's their photos. And that's the whole purpose of those albums is for them. And the family albums are for me. The uh, mini out the smash books and the TNs and things like that. Those are also for uh, my kids to enjoy. And it's kind of their version of the family albums, but it's much more accessible. 
because I don't know if you have noticed, but uh, kids don't really like those giant 12 by 12 albums uh, terribly much. My kids actually really prefer the Smashbook and the mini albums and the folios because they're more accessible. They're easier to just pick up, flip through, like, oh, that was cool, I remember that, you know, that kind of thing, than those pulling out those big giant three ring albums that once they span, you know, once they're open, are 24 inches long at least. And I mean, that's a lot. That's a huge thing to be holding on to. And it's not terribly accessible for them, especially for my twins. And so while my older kids have 12 by 12 albums, the twins have nine by 12 albums. And so it just really depends why I'm, why am I scrapping that photo? Uh, in this case, like this, these are just, I'm sure I've scrapped some of these photos before. I'm sure I have, and that's okay. I'm totally fine with re-scrapping photos because I know they won't all make it. <laughs> there will come a time where my children have to decide what are they gonna keep and what are they gonna throw away. And so I figure if I put those stories in a few different places that hopefully some of them will survive. That's, that's just my way of thinking about it. Uh, that said, we take so many photos, so, so many photos of the kids that uh, I, I could never possibly get caught up anyway. <laughs> so I just figure, I just, I'll just keep going, right? I just, I'll just keep going. And uh, whichever ones they decide to keep, that's fine with me. They get rid of all of them, I would be a little upset, but I also wouldn't be here, so <laughs> I'm not here to, you know, <laughs> to argue or, or I guess I could come back and, and haunt them. That would be fine. <laughs> I'm sure they wouldn't mind. <laughs> I started this, but I really want to add journaling there and not word strips. Yeah, it, it'll be fine. <laughs> They won't mind if their mom comes back and haunt them, I'm sure. I'm sure it'd be fine. <laughs> Let's see. But I do know, I know that these are gonna be more accessible to them. I have this strong, strong feeling that uh, many, many an album is gonna be left unread, <laughs> unlooked at, and that's okay, because some of them are for me. If I live for a very long time, then I would want to look through them, you know? So, to heck with what the kids want. <laughs> oh. Yes, Saturday lunchtime. Ooh, nice. So, speaking of washing clothes, Melissa, uh, is, is it true that Australians don't use dryers? I had heard that about the UK as well, that they like set their, their clothes out on the line and things like that. And I was curious if that was an Australian thing too. Because I know there is some, not a lot, but some overlap between your way of doing things. I, I couldn't imagine not having a dryer, I'll be honest. all of my kids, it would be a complete nightmare. <laughs> a complete nightmare. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I find, even with my own kids, my kids are not on social media, but occasionally uh, family members will post photos on social media, and I do steal them. <laughs> I do. I definitely steal them because otherwise there'd be no way to get pictures of them because we don't get to see them. Oh, I guess that makes sense. That makes sense. We see here in Mississippi, it's so humid all of the time. We actually get quite a lot of rain here in Mississippi. And I don't think we'd ever get dry. I don't think anything would ever dry. To be 100% honest, I really don't. I don't think it would. Because the ground here hardly ever gets dry. 
But yeah, we, we have to use the door. Plus, I have five kids. I can't imagine doing that much laundry <laughs> and having places to put all of it. You know? Yeah, I know there'll come a time where the, the photos slow down and I won't see them as often and uh, we'll have to adjust. But my kids know. They know when they go places like camping with their scout troops or something like that. Uh, or my older kids, if they go up to their dad's family for the summer, which they won't be this summer because it's not safe. But um, if anything like that, they send me pictures. They know. <laughs> <laughs> they know mom mom wants to keep up with them and uh, they love the fact that I have scrapbooks for them they love looking through them uh, usually they get down on the floor and drag the thing out <laughs> and just enjoy kind of you know looking through it I always I do wonder that I wonder you know I wonder that about scrapbooking in general is there gonna come a time where we just give up on these giant albums and go to smaller sizes. It doesn't seem feasible at the moment with five kids worth of photos to add. I mean, it just doesn't really seem feasible to me. She says as she occasionally puts one photo on a layout. But <laughs> if I wanna have room for photos and journaling and some sort of design, I don't know how I could go a whole lot smaller, but we shall see. You never say never. I might get to a point where I've only got the twins at home and, or even just Joseph and the twins, because he's so camera shy, that I may decide time to go smaller. We'll see. I also wonder if I'm gonna have storage for all of these photo albums that are gonna be made between now and then, you know? There's another thing to consider. I know a friend of mine who's been scrapping 20 years, as long as I have, uh, and, I'm, and I say that, uh, I'm not that old, <laughs> mind you. I've just been scrapping since high school. And because I had someone say that the other day, she was like, how old are you? <laughs> you don't sound very old, but you say you've been scrapping for 20 years. I'm like, oh no, I started scrapping when I was 15. I got the bug early, if you will. Kind of caught the, the scrappy bug early on. Oh yeah. Also, do, do you have a dryer? You just don't use it? I know they use a ton of electricity. I know they do. Absolutely they do. But uh, it's just, it's always so wet here. It's one of the reasons I've kind of steered away from metal flare and never really got into metal embellishments very much because uh, they rust. And things like any kind of dry adhesive like a uh, tape runner, things like that, doesn't really stick long term here. I've tried, I've had to repair so many pages using tape runner. It just doesn't stay wet enough. Even double sided tape will stay somewhat wet, if you will, uh, over time. It retains its stick in my experience. And I use a lot of wet glue because it just does a better job in this, in the, the wet environment here. You like the matting on the journal card? Yes, this is actually an index card. <laughs> yeah, that's, I've seen a lot of people hanging, like uh, Adele occasionally, she used to do blogs. I don't think she really does them anymore, but she used to do blogs and she would have, you know, like washing set up in a lot of different places kind of around the house. And I re just remember thinking, there's no way I would run out of house. <laughs> I just would because we have so many kids and we go through so many clothes. We would just run out of house to hang them. I think it would just be 
probably just be too hard to maintain. Because let me tell you, none of my kids are babies and we still go through a lot of laundry. A lot of laundry. Oh, you understand. You understand 100%. <laughs> There's just laundry everywhere, isn't there? It's just a... <laughs> Either that or I guess you have to keep up with it every single day. I don't do laundry every day. Uh, we do laundry like twice a week to keep up. Uh, I used to try to do a laundry every day and I just couldn't, could not maintain it. I just don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I could make that sound better, but it's, it's the truth. <laughs> just lead with the truth, you know, I just don't want to do laundry every day. Not interested. Not that I'm doing something, you know, that's so much more important, mind you, but uh, such is life. You make choices, you have priorities. I've always told my husband I'm a stay-at-home mom, not the stay-at-home maid. Because I, I, trying to keep up with everything would, is a nightmare. I've tried. I can't. You get no time at all to breathe, to, to sit. It's truly emotionally, physically exhausting. And I finally just told my husband, I can't, I can't do everything. And he took over some kids finally got old enough to take over some chore duties too. And that has helped a lot. <laughs> yeah. So what I was saying earlier, this is an index card. I have a whole stack of these in a couple different colors. From the office store and I used to use them a lot for journaling spots I think I just knocked something on the floor that's all right I'll find it later uh, I used to use them really really often but I just don't anymore and then I, I pulled some out for the mini album because I ran out of these most of these type journaling spots that were included and uh, have just been using them in here and I kind of refound them if you will so those came out pretty cute i think i like that just talk about now i'll tell you a quick story quick story before we move on my grandmother used to say that my dad whose name is steve had to have a dog to keep him out of trouble if he if they didn't have a dog at home he was off getting into trouble <laughs> Which, if you knew my dad, would absolutely shock you. Because he was such a sweet, sweet, kind guy. Now, this one I may hold off on because I think I'm going to do a whole page of some of his different expressions. So, I think I'll save that one. And I may do that for a few other people, too. Who are really, He was such a goofy, funny person. He just was. Okay, so there's Grandpa. Here is Uncle Tom. Yeah. I don't have a lot of photos of him. He was he was a bit camera shy when he was around. You're having trouble finding 12 by 12 page protectors? Where are you at, Renee? If you don't mind my asking. If you do, just tell me to hush. It's fine. <laughs> totally fine it may be a supply chain issue or it may be you're in an area that they don't carry them I will tell you one of and this is not sponsored because I I couldn't possibly be sponsored by them but uh, scrapbook.com has excellent shipping prices overseas from what I've been told so if you're not in the US Oh, you're in the U.S. Everything seems to be out of stock. Hmm. Maybe that's a uh, supply chain issue then. I had not heard that. If there was a problem getting them. Maybe just give them another week or so. I would, I would give them another week or so to try to get caught up on supply chain things. I also don't know what stores are open in your area because... 
it's going to be different for everybody. What am I going to do on this page? So this is a, a very young photo of my Uncle Tom. And this is a very old photo of him. And that'll lead into Grandpa's photos, who is his dad. So maybe I will do just a single page here. Let me see if I have any larger cut aparts left. Let's see, but not the small ones. I think I've used most of the big ones. All I really have left is two 12 by 12s that I haven't been cut into yet. This piece that has, and the six by eight paper pad. Oh, there's some larger pieces in here, actually. I don't think I realized that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out. Do, do, do. Yep. Two pages in a row. That's nice. That's crazy. Everything's out of stock. I will say that I had stocked up on them a while back just because I found a sale. Might still check scrapbook.com. They have pretty good shipping prices. I find the same thing with a cherry on top. I just placed a big old order at a cherry on top. The shipping was only like $13 and it was a big order. So worth a shot to check around online if you can't find it in, you know, in your local stores. I know some folks don't normally do shopping online, but in this time, I think <laughs> we may just have to, you know, we may just have to get used to it. I, uh, I used to really enjoy walking around Tuesday morning in the, the craft stores to pick out some, some new things. And, you know, it's always nice to touch, right? Touch all the new things, see the papers in person. We don't really have any uh, true scrapbooking stores. We don't have any like small shops here. In Mississippi there don't, as far as I know there's none in the state or at least not within a hundred miles because I did search within a hundred miles of me and there wasn't one there could be some in the south though down at the coast it's uh, I know there's some scrapbook and groups down there so possible there's some down there but uh, here in, in North Mississippi we have no scrapbooking stores anymore we have craft stores but they have pretty you know limited supply but you can still get <laughs> page protectors there though. You can get a couple of things, but not much from American Crafts for sure. Not much from the, the major companies that I like anyway. There we go. It didn't cut perfectly straight, but that's okay. Alright, some of these sound like they should go on cards. Praying for you in your time of sorrow. Let's not use that. So very sorry. Um, hmm. Let's see. Maybe I'll cover up that part. We'll see. This one might be good. They just kind of layer here, I think. Something like that. We shall see how we go. I'm trying to use that, but it just doesn't seem to fit very well on the page. I don't think I have a code, Sylvia. I do know that if you use one of the links in my videos, uh, I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> if you go to any of the links in my videos, I know the one especially for, um, what was it? I'm not sure. They're called share sale codes. You know what? I will put a link in the comments below when I'm done and that'll take you to a cherry on top and it'll give me credit. That's really nice of you to say. I really appreciate it. I get a, a small commission if you use those links in my description, but I don't, you know, advertise them because I don't want anyone to feel pressured to use them. That's not the point. 
it just helps me buy more scrappy things to show you guys more fun things to make. <laughs> That's all. It's not a not an income for me necessarily. I know some people you know, I think that's always been a, a dream of a lot of people to make their hobby their job kind of thing that, you know, that's more enjoyable for them. And I mean, go for it. If that's your deal, go for it. I, uh, I just, I would feel pressured. You know, I would feel pressured. So those weren't as helpful as I was hoping they were going to be. Hmm. What else can I do? Yeah, just maybe a little misty would be nice. I also kind of like this branding strip. May I use that? Yeah, so I'll put a link in the in the comments and I'll pin it. It's a uh, a share sale link to a cherry on top, and it will give me credit. Appreciate that. A lot of the links I put in the description box are to a cherry on top, unless they don't carry whatever it is, and then I'll I'll usually link to scrapbook.com. Because they carry, like, ridiculous numbers of everything. They carry old stuff, too, which always surprises me. Oh. Welcome, Joan. Oh, you're putting up all the decorations. What kind of decorations are you putting up, Joan? Yes, I appreciate it. No, thank you very much, Sylvia. When I said pressure, I meant some people feel pressure to use my code if I mention it all the time. Like they would feel bad. I definitely don't want anybody to feel bad about it. That's no. Just a bonus. It's <laughs> totally just a bonus. But that's why I don't bring it up all the time is uh, because I wouldn't want anybody to feel like, oh, she just wants to make money off of it. And I, I wouldn't want people to think that because it's really not why I'm here. <laughs> it's not the main reason for the channel at all. It's just a nice little bonus. And I like that companies offer that option. It's really nice that they offer that to crafters and creators who do share their content because that's, that's, I can direct someone, hey, this is where I got it. You know, that's kind of nice to be able to say, this is where I, it came from. So if they're looking for something, they can find it. Because I know personally, I used to watch a lot of Inky Quill videos. And she was using uh, things that uh, I couldn't find anywhere. And then <laughs> finally realized, oh, she's in Australia. <laughs> no wonder I can't find anything she's using. <laughs> but I just think it's kind of nice to be like, oh, that looks cool. I want to try that. And, and then you'd have no idea where it came from. Yeah. I think it's helpful. Yes, Joan, what kind of decorations are you putting up? Are you celebrating something or are you just decorating your house generally? I don't really decorate my house for anything but Christmas. I know some people do. In the U.S. it's very popular for people to decorate for every single holiday. For uh, Easter, for 4th of July. I had a, uh, a grandma who used to have a, a lovely time decorating her house for all kinds of different holidays. And her house always looked so cool. It was always so neat. She wouldn't go crazy, but she had, you know, a few things up for every holiday. I think it made her feel feel nice to be surrounded by something new, you know? When you live by yourself, it can be kind of tricky to make the days not feel <laughs> the same. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll put that in the comments for you, Sylvia, so that you can, uh, you or anybody else who wants to, please don't feel pressured ever to buy anything because uh, that's not why we're here. <laughs> We're here to be supportive and encouraging and hopefully inspirational. That's always the, the hope. I hope that I help somebody go, hey, I want to do that. <laughs> because that's how I felt when I got on YouTube and discovered, hey, there's scrapbooking on YouTube. What? I didn't know that. 
And discovering that was a big, big thing for me. It was a huge source of inspiration, a huge source of uh, excitement for me to get really seriously into scrapbooking and try to get try to get caught up. I'm not. It's not really a something I'm stressing about, but it's it's something in the back of my mind where I'm like, wouldn't it be lovely <laughs> to get caught up and be able to do a lot of random other projects without feeling just a wee bit guilty. That I'm so many years behind. So I'm, I've done really well. I've caught up to 2017. That's what I'm working on right now. So three years behind is not bad. <laughs> there was a time I was about six years behind. So three years is not bad. I have also started, I noticed, tell me if you've started doing this. But since I've started really focusing on scrapbooking, I have found myself being very intentional, intentional rather, about the type of photos that I take and how many I take. I used to take hundreds of photos weekly. Like I was taking, and they're digital photos. I figured I'll delete them later, but then never did. And so going back through now, I'm having to weed through hundreds and hundreds of photos for each month of the year, which is how I separate my photos in my uh, computer, is by year and then by month inside of the year. And, <laughs> oh my gosh, so many photos. And I've just gotten to a point where I think I've just realized you know, unless it's something that I actually think I would want to scrap, I don't always take pictures anymore. I mean, I still take probably maybe 10 or 12 a week because I got five kids. There's always those cute little moments, you know, uh, but I don't take anywhere near as many as I used to. Then again, also don't have a baby at home anymore <laughs> and had a baby at home for a long time uh, with five kids. There was always a baby at home. And I was always taking lots of photos of, of those babies. I don't know how I had this. I think it was like that. That looks right. Ish. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> oh, you live in an apartment complex. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Sylvia. <laughs> I don't think that means you would be a creeper. Don't they say that, uh, what is it? Something is the imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I think that's the way that saying goes. I mean, it depends on your neighbor, I suppose, if she would be, if you think she would be upset by it or rude by it, rude about it. Just say, I was so impressed with your beautiful wreath. I wanted to have one too. I don't think anybody would have a problem with that. Or at least most people wouldn't. They should be flattered. As long as you're not like stealing their wreath. <laughs> Who knows? And otherwise, I don't think it's a problem. <laughs> well, I need somewhere to, to journal on this. Maybe I should do... Maybe I should have done something like this. Nope, that didn't work. All right, well, what I might do then is put another little index card piece there. I have, how many? I have a whole stack of the silly things. Have them in multiple colors. <laughs> multiple sizes well I only have a few of the big ones but mostly multiple colors that blue might be a bit shocking on the page but I think we can make it work you know, we're just totally gonna steal hers yeah you see now I could see how she could have an issue with that Sylvia. <laughs> maybe just a small problem with that you know just little, little. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
But yeah, no, she would probably be like, oh, look, she, she has a wreath up too. And if she's a new neighbor, how does she know that you didn't always do wreaths? <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> you could have always done wreaths and she just never saw it. <laughs> huh. Could be. How would she know? That looks kind of clunky. I think... I think I may do that one as journaling strips. That way I can kind of alternate them and make them look a little better. That sounds like a plan. No, the only re the only time we really decorate is for Christmas, just because I can't be bothered. First of all, I don't really decorate the inside of my house, to be 100% honest. We have pictures on the walls and that's about it. We can't really do knickknacks because the kids break them. <laughs> we don't steal, we permanent borrow. <laughs> Y'all are hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, is that like lawn equipment? You know, oh, can we borrow that? And. <laughs> It just never makes its way back home. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I think this looks better. Just to have some little... Little journaling lines instead. I think that'll work. A wee bit better. I like that. Put those aside for future Laura to deal with. Yes, that's true. I could have put a mat around it, but I think breaking, because I've got so much blockiness already with these two, I think it needed to be broken up a little bit. What did I do with my tape? Oh. <laughs> if my head wasn't attached, I'd lose it. I lose things on my desk on the regular. Just a messy, messy person. That's all there is to you would not want to see my desk right now. It is a gigantic mess. I have just stacks of stuff everywhere. I need to finish assembling my craft room and I, of course, am procrastinating on doing so. Because cleaning is not nearly as much fun as making pretty things. There we go. That looks good. It's true, that, that yellow was really bright. But you know, I mat a lot of things in my scrapbooking and I uh, have had comments from people asking why. Uh, and it's because of that. It usually helps either tone it down or give it some definition so it makes sense in the space. You know? So that's why. And then I'll just add a few more bits and bobs to this page, do one more, and we'll call it a night. So funny. Permanent borrow. I'm going to have to remember that. <laughs> uh, I had a friend of mine telling me that she was going to be so glad when her kids went back to school and, uh, and she could <laughs> breathe. <laughs> and I thought, well... Yeah, I get that. I do. I'm I'm a stay-at-home parent, and uh, all but one of my kids is in school full-time usually. Uh, I do homeschool one of them. He is gifted and does not deal well with school environments. So we just keep him home, and I homeschool him. We'll have to make a decision though pretty soon on my older two kids especially. Well, all of them really, but my twins are in uh, a small class because they're autistic. And so I don't think they'd have as much of an issue, but it's all a risk, isn't it? It's all a risk. Everything's a risk at the moment. Nothing feels safe. 
except staying home and scrapbooking. See, you know, it all comes back full circle. <laughs> this hobby has saved us once again. I keep seeing hilarious memes though, talking about, <laughs> uh, talking about, you know, you never thought you'd need a stash until the apocalypse hit. <laughs> apocalypse uh, and then uh, all of a sudden it's like see see there was a great reason I had this giant stash this whole time <laughs> who is the bad one now now that you're stuck at home with nothing to do and no stash to play with too funny yeah I think most of us crafters at least have some sort of stash I really need to use mine. I have a feeling I'm going to be going on another spending freeze. Less for monetary reasons and more for the fact that I need to use my stuff. You know? I think that's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to have to happen. <laughs> Either that or I'm going to have to clean out again. And I'd rather not. I'd really rather not. I had to give up so much stuff last time I cleaned up. Last time I did a, a purge, if you will, of my space, I had to give up so much stuff to make it all fit. And I just, I don't want to. <laughs> what I have left are things that I love. Things that I don't want to give up. It might be too much gray, I think. Hmm. Tricky, tricky. That's the same color as the background too. Ah, uh, where did that other one go? <laughs> got gray, we've got the green. This one's a little big, but I might have to make it work just because of the color. But it kind of disappears too. There's no winning. <laughs> just give up, Laura. Oh man, crazy stuff though, crazy stuff. And our city, our city's a bit wild. People here in Mississippi aren't much fans of following rules, being told what to do. Really not interested. So I don't imagine things are gonna get any better for quite a while. Luckily, my mom has taken this very seriously and she has put herself on lockdown and has been extraordinarily careful, which makes me very, very happy. I knew, she, I mean, not that I didn't think she would because she's a very, very careful person already. Very, very intelligent woman and a very, very careful person. So I didn't imagine she would be taking risks. My grandpa, on the other hand, oh Lord bless him. He's decided if he gets it, he gets it. He's gonna enjoy what time he has left. And the rest of us keep trying to convince him you'd have more time <laughs> if you stayed home. Bless his heart. But I guess when you get into being in your 80s, you, you get to make, uh, whatever decision is best in your mind and you don't have to listen to anybody else. Especially us young whippersnappers. <laughs> you know, I respect that. I respect, he's, he's an adult. He's gotta make his own decisions and I'm certainly not gonna tell him what to do. My kids on the other hand, <laughs> they don't have that choice. They gotta stay home. And that means we won't be going anywhere near grandpa so that we don't infect him. Because, oh, that would be the worst thing. I would be heartbroken. Absolutely heartbroken. If we were the ones to, uh, who shared it with him. Mm -mm. I would be absolutely heartbroken. So, no, we are going to take that chance. Oh, thank you very much.
we're almost done with this one. We have one more page to do. And then we'll be finished for the night. I think so. Did you just join us, Wendy? Or have you been watching? Quietly watching, which is totally fine. I don't mind. Not everybody likes to, to sit and chat, and that's totally cool. Totally fine with me. Now, how did I want to do grandma's? I think I intended this to be the first one. So let's see, maybe we'll do it. I'm gonna have several of her too. It was very, very close to my grandma. I love this photo. I think I'm just gonna tape this one down here and I'll, do, I'll try to find some older pictures of her to do a bit of a grid. This one, I kinda wanna do a big journaling spot with that one, I think. So yeah, this one I'm just gonna go ahead and tape down and as I find more pictures of her from her growing up and young adulthood, I'll just add them there. He just remembered. <laughs> It's so funny. I have, I, I honestly do not feel bad. I have an alarm set on my phone to remind me. And I do this every Friday. <laughs> Telling you. And the <laughs> it is what it is. I am, I am a scattered, scattered person. That's just be real. Uh, I'm scattered on a good day. Let's see what I want to do on the side. I'm kind of running out of journaling spots, I think. Right, 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 right. I got those. We already got those out. Okay. Hmm. Last page. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I like this, but maybe I'll put it, if I put it here, I don't think those photos will fit. Maybe I'll save it and like run it in between the photos like that when they're all on there. I'll have to find some more photos of her. I know there's lots of them out there. This was her when she was, hmm. 20s, I think. I think she was in her 20s here. And uh, she was a bit of a bit of a rebel. Not big time rebel, like <laughs> bit of a rebel. <laughs> Women in her generation did not wear pants. They did not wear pants. And in this photo, she has a pair of her brother's jeans on rolled up to the knee. Well, this is quite sweet. Maybe we'll do this one. And is, uh, I think she's also got one of their shirts on because it looks like she's wearing a giant men's button up shirt as well. Pants! Yes, Wendy. <laughs> My grandma was always, always just one of those women that was not going to be told what to do. She, that's just her personality. She was incredible. I'm sure that's not the word <laughs> others may have used for, the, for her <laughs> to describe her, but it's, it's the word I would use. <laughs> I think she was incredible. She didn't care what anybody thought about her. Yeah, and in her 20s, that would have made her, gosh, what year was that? Let's see, she would have been mid 80s now. So that would have been 60s, I think, yes. I think that would have been in the 60s. And in where she lived, I know she had, she made a point of telling me, women were not supposed to wear pants. And I told her that was ridiculous. <laughs> 
Because I rarely wear a dress myself. I'm just not, I'm, all right. The real reason is because I am such a klutz, I can't be trusted to wear pants. <laughs> I fall way too often, way too often. Quite regularly, I think it might be nice to have a little bit of like a white behind here to kind of break that up. Yep, like that. Now my girls love dresses. My twins love them. Absolutely love them. They wear dresses almost every day. Now they wear capris underneath or pants underneath because like their mama, <laughs> they're very clumsy. So just for, just for safety's sake, they too wear pants underneath. Okay. Sorry, my desk is getting a bit cluttered here. I'm gonna save this one of dad for next time. I'm gonna print some more, do some fun expressions. My dad was always that person who always had a goofy look on his face. You would say something and look at him and he would have just the goofiest expression and just, you could not stop laughing. He was so ridiculous. Or he would say something and it'd be a serious moment, right? You just got in trouble or something serious happened. And my dad would just pop out this one line and the whole room would be cracking up laughing. He just was one of those people that was so good at making people comfortable, making people laugh, at just being generally a, a nice person to be around. Everyone that I've ever met who knew him has said that, that they just, he's just generally a nice guy to be around. Alrighty, get this all taped up and embellished and we'll be finished for today. If you haven't had a chance to check out the free mini class, I posted a playlist that has all of the classes, all of the lessons rather, and all of the videos in it. Uh, it's a class that I made in 2018 for my blog, but then never shared to YouTube. And when I went back to review it to see if it would be okay to release it, it was just fine. It was great. It worked just fine just for YouTube. So I went ahead and put it on YouTube as well. So you can just watch the videos at your leisure and maybe learn something new. I always like learning something new. I take lots of classes in scrapbooking just for fun. And sometimes I don't learn anything new and that's okay too. I like the projects. I like, I take in the Inky Quill class that she did, giant class that she did. Uh, I've taken that a couple of times. I always feel like I pick something, pick up something new from it. Her style is not my style, but I do really enjoy watching her scrap. And I do enjoy hearing her thoughts on why she does what she does on her pages. I think it's interesting. I always think it's interesting to hear the why. Why did you choose that piece? And that's why when I do my voiceovers, I try to make sure to include my thoughts as well. So that it's not a mystery. <laughs> Oh, yes. I do miss my grandma. I definitely miss her quite a lot. Oh, that might be nice to do the little doily. Need something else. Maybe a, maybe a larger heart. Not that one. Not that one, though. Maybe tucked behind. Oh, yes. T tucked behind is better. Yep, like that. Simple stories. Heart is what this one is. It was a collection that was specifically for uh, memorial type sympathy sort of things. It has a lot of things for that you could use for cards, but I thought I bought it specifically for this project. 
because I knew I wanted to do this project with it. Now I may at some point have to get a bit more. We'll see. Because at the moment I'm I'm still got the six by eight paper pad. And I've still got plenty of embellishments, so I'm not terribly worried about it. But I could at some point may need to sneaky pick up a little bit more. <laughs> hey Sala. I think that's how you say your name. I hope I said it right. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. We are wrapping up, but I will show you guys the finished, what we completed today, so you can uh, get a look at it. And this, of course, this video will stay on YouTube, so you can catch the replay if you missed it live. That way you can still join in and listen to my ramblings. Because <laughs> how many pages did we make today, guys? Was it four? I want to say it was four. Right now I'm going to keep this one a little bit simpler because I have a feeling as I add, keep this one simple because if I add on to this page with more photos from when she was younger, then I'll probably have some things I want to add to both sides. Okay. So let me show you what we've gotten done. We did this page, of course. And then this page. And uh, let me hold it up a little bit. This page of my uncle. If you're just joining, this is a mini album of memories for people we have lost in our family. And then these two pages we did today. So four pages, not bad, not bad. So I think those came out pretty darn cute. Really enjoying working in this mini album. If you guys have any questions about the album or anything like that, I will uh, come back and answer any comments that are after it's done. And I hope you've had a wonderful evening, afternoon, morning, depending on where you are. So uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.